So the last piece of the U.S. customary system is capacity. And we really don't look at things as capacity. We kind of just look at things like as liquid, filling liquid. And that's really what it is. Any sort of like liquid type substance um, fills up a container and it takes the shape of the container, right? So if I put like orange juice in a cup, orange juice doesn't have its own form, like the way ice does, right? Ice is the shape of, turns into the shape of the ice container. But when you put it in the cup, it doesn't turn into the shape of the cup, right? It stays like that square or cube or the sphere. And so unlike liquid type, where it's even um, a smoothie, right? You put Even if it's thicker liquid, it still takes the shape of the container it's in. So capacity is exactly that. It's exactly the measurement of how we measure liquid. Because liquid takes the shape of the container, we have to think about how we're going to measure measure that liquid. So we tend to like subtract the weight of the container and then pour the liquid in the container and then that way we can measure what's the liquid. So that one is, this is kind of tricky because it is a fluid ounce, which we did, we used ounces for weight. So we just have to be careful that if we're talking about liquid, that it's a fluid ounce. Cup, pint, quart, gallon. Um, so I put here and be very careful an ounce is by itself is weight and a fluid ounce is capacity. Okay. But it, they don't, we don't talk about fluid ounce when we discuss capacity. If the, if the context of the problem is liquid, we automatically assume a fluid ounce. If the context is weight, like how many pounds of pecans I need, right? How many ounces of pecans? Well, pecans are not a liquid. Therefore, we would use the ounce and the weight. If I asked you how many ounces in that cup of coffee, we know the context of coffee is liquid and therefore we use the fluid ounce, but we still use just ounces. So we just have to be careful. So here are some common examples, a cup of flour, for a cookie recipe. So notice the cup and the quarts and the gallons are okay, right? It's just that ounce that we have to look out for. A 12 ounce cup of coffee, a pint of beer, which we all love sometimes, a gallon of gas, a quart of milk. So we have a, because there are more units for capacity, we do have a little more unit equivalents, which results in more conversion factors. All right, so we do have cup to ounces, pint to cups, quarts to pints, gallons to quarts. So we can go from quarts to cups if we need to, or a quart to ounces if we need to, or a pint to a cup, you know, and we could use these conversion factors. And again, we can use as many conversion factors as we need to get the end result of our um, units. So in this case, when I want to convert 72 ounces to cups, I know now I can use 17, 72 ounces per throw it over one times. And once again, notice the prefix on the ounces is OZ. How do I know this is a fluid ounce? Well, I would not convert weight from ounces to cups. If this was a weight, I would not be converting it to cups. I'd be converting it to pounds or tons. The fact that I'm converting ounces to cups allows me the context to say, hey, this is going to be capacity. So it's very important to understand that when we go to 72 ounces to cups, you'll never see in weight pounds to cups or tons to cups. It, those are weights. So the fact that we're doing ounces to cups we imp implies that we're doing fluid ounces. Okay, and then we do know from up here that one cup is eight ounces. I am going from light, um, light to heavy, so it would be one cup per eight ounces. Or I could see that I need cups in the numerator and know that I'm going to have one cup per eight ounces. Now, the cups abbreviation is just little c. Don't write CU because that means something else that's taken. So C is cups. We see now that the ounces can reduce out and we're left with 72 times 1, which is 72, divided by 1 times 8, which is 8 cups. 
72 divided by 8 is commonly known as 9, so 9 cups. And again, remember that I know some of you see this and know the answer. What we're trying to do is figure out the process and embed the process, internalize the process, so we can apply this to any any problem in the world and more and use it throughout our life, these conversions, right? Like we don't want to just use it for this class. I want you to take this with you and be able to go to a cooking class and convert ounces to cups fast. When someone raises your hand, I remember when I was pregnant, I went to a nutrition class um, to watch your carbohydrates and so many of the women there could not convert. They were like, I don't know how many cups are in this pint, like, you know, and they had it because they had to figure out how many carbohydrates they could eat. And I was the only one that was like, boom, 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 because you know, I understand this process of converting. So you'll see conversion of units throughout your life, whether you're doing home remodeling in your job, if you work for water science, you're converting units all the time. So this is something that will, you'll take with you. So again, even though it seems like a simple process, it really is a process you're going to use forever. Okay, so let's go ahead and do five cups and put it over one times pints. Now I do know from up there that two cups is equal to one pint. And I know that I need pint in the end, so that should be the numerator. So this means that this will be one pint per two cups. And so we'll go ahead and reduce out cups and get five times one, which is five, over one times two, which is two pints. Now, we usually don't go into a bar and say, can I get five halves pints, please, of beer? And we, we all say what it is, it's two and a half pints of beer. So what we'll say, we usually need the decimal representation. Okay, let's do quarts to pints. So now I have seven quarts, so quarts, is QT, okay, don't use QZ or QS, that's already taken somewhere in the world, so we have to use QT for quarts. Put that over one and multiply it by a conversion factor. How many pints in a quart? Well, I do see here that one quart is two pints. I do see I need pints in the end, so that has to be the numerator. So just looking at this, oops, this one, I know that pints will be in the numerator, and I have two pints per one quart. So just so you know, the ending units that you need should always be in the numerator, and then it kind of makes the conversion a little faster because then you don't have to look it up. So then we reduce out quarts and we get seven times two, which is 14, divided by one times one, which is one, and so this will be 14 pints. Let's try gallons to quarts. So we have 22 gallons, and again, gallons is fun. I think it's a fun abbreviation. It's gal, <laughs> gal for gallons. You know, that sounds kind of cool. And then over one, and then times, and then a, how many gallons in a quart? So if I need to convert to quarts, I know that quarts has to be in the numerator. And therefore, I'm going to be using this one, and four quarts will be in the numerator over one gallon. So four quarts per one gallon. And so um, quart by itself is QT, and then quarts is the same as like pounds. You can put the S. So I put the S here on four quarts. Whereas in here, I put QT for one quart. Okay, so let's go ahead and reduce the gallons out, and we get 22 times 4, which is 88, divided by 1 times 1, which is 1, so 88 quarts. Okay, but of course we can use always more than one conversion factor. So let's try to convert ounces to gallons. So I don't have anything here from ounces all the way to gallons, right? 
So I'm somehow going to have to convert that. So the first thing I want to do is write out 1,478 ounces. The fact that I'm converting it to gallons tells me that these ounces are fluid ounces, right? And so we'll put that over one. And I know I need gallons on top in the end no matter what. So let's go ahead and convert. Let's do the first one where we're going to do ounces to cups. I know that there is one cup per eight ounces. And now let's get to cups to pints, right, where we need one pint, I'm sorry, per two cups. Okay, that gets us to pints. Now I need the quarts, right? There are two pints per quart, so one quart per two pints. Okay. Oh my gosh. So now I'm in quarts. So one gallon is four quarts. Did I get there? Let's see. I need the gallons in the top, good, in the numerator in the end. Hopefully every single unit's reduced out. Let's see. Ounces with ounces, cups with cups, pints and pints, and quarts and quarts. That's great. We only have gallons left. Now let's multiply across numerators. 1478 divided by 1 times 8, which is 8, times 2 times 2 times 4 gallons. Okay, so here I would go ahead and put this in the calculator. The calculator that we have here is a TI-30XS and it's a really great model because it does a lot more than it appears. So if I wanted to do this, I would have 1478 divided by, and it gives me these little parentheses above the 8 and the 9. And so now I can do this, instead of doing it the old-fashioned way where I do 8 times 2 times 2 times 4 first and then divide, I can do everything all in one shabam here. So 1 times 2 times 2 times 4. And notice I get a decimal, but because they gave me whole numbers, I can round to the nearest tenths, right? One decimal past the numbers. So 11 point, and then the test digit is 4. So that means it'll just be 11.5 gallons. Okay, so I just want to emphasize that we can always use as many conversion factors as we need. Why? Because remember that we're always multiplying by this one, right? And because of the unit equivalence. And the word unit itself is like one unit. So let's try a um, an, an application, right? Because we love lemonade so much. So Lemoncita is making lemonade to bring to the beach. She has two containers. One holds a gallon. The other holds two quarts. If she fills both containers, how many cups of lemonade will she have? So this is just one hot beach mess, right? <laughs> Because in reality, this is what we do. We have, like, we probably make lemonade and we're, we're going to go on a picnic or to the beach and we're just filling containers that we have in the house. It doesn't really, we don't really think about, is, is it all in quarts? Is it all in cups, right? So I just, the cups part, you know, comes from the number of people she's probably going to serve. And she probably doesn't have a lot of containers, so she's just finding the one that holds a gallon and another one that holds the quarts and then hopefully they all fit. So, and then she needs a certain number of cups, right? So the goal is to get this gallon and get the quarts all into cups first, because that's what we need, and then add them together. So there's going to be some preliminary work here, but the goal is, is to put everything in cups. So the first step is to rewrite all units in cups. And then I'll highlight those two so you know why. So the first one would be one gallon. So one gallon is how many cups? Well, I put that over one, and then we can start using the conversion factors. The one thing I do know is that there is 
four quarts in one gallon. And then I knew that um, there are two uh, pints in one quart. And essentially what we're doing is the exact previous example, but like opposite, right? Because now I'm going from gallons and I need cups, right? But we're very close because now I do have pints to cups, right? So there are two cups per pint. And then sure enough, I should have cups in the end. So gallons reduce out, quarts reduce out, pints reduce out, and I am, I have cups in the end. And I just now need to multiply across numerators and denominators. So one times four times two times two. So one times four is four, four times two is eight, eight times two is 16. One times one times one times one. So 16 divided by one is 16. And then we'll leave it as cups. Okay, kind of put an asterisk there. The second one, so I'll put like a A, right? The second uh, container holds two quarts. So two quarts, put it over one, and let's use some of these conversion factors. So I can use these ones up here, right? So I need in cups, so I'm at quarts here, so I can use two pints per one quart. and then two cups per one pint. And that should, again, leave me with cups in the numerator. Quartz, quartz, pints, pints, perfect. And then we get two times two times two, which is eight, divided by one times one times one, which is one. So eight divided by one is eight cups. Excellent. So the second part now is finding the total cups of lemonade, right? So the total number of cups in lemonade is equal to 16 cups plus 8 cups, which is 24 cups of lemonade. Similar to like what we would really do in the kitchen. Like I can't imagine, many of us, like I make sangria when I have like my fun adult parties and I'm like, oh, I need a container to carry this in because the cooler doesn't fit my big sangria container, right? I have to do cooler, make sure it's still chill. So I put them in smaller containers. Now, some of them are in gallons, some of them are in quarts, right? But I need to know, well, how many is this gonna, not, not one person will drink a gallon of sangria, right? So I want to see how many cups there are. So, and then really in real life, we estimate a lot of it, right? So um, I just think that uh, these are good skills to develop and especially with the process. It's not really memorizing all the conversion factors, but really the process, if you can memorize, then you'll be able to apply this to any sort of problem or any challenging problem, right?